Class, today I have a really exciting lesson for you. We are going to learn about Millard Fillmore. Millard Fillmore was born January 7th and Nathaniel Fillmore. Nathaniel Fillmore was the son of Nathaniel Fillmore Sr. Samuel, please put away your phone. Are your students engaged and paying attention? Are you giving them enough time to process your lesson? Welcome to Launch Your Classroom. I'm Kyle Pope. Have you ever been delivering a really good lesson and you start to notice that some students aren't paying attention? One might be chatting to a friend, another slyly looking at their cell phone, and maybe even one more starting to nod off. Well, here's the thing. It's happened to all of us. It doesn't matter if you're the greatest teacher ever. If the lesson starts going on for too long, then some students are going to lose attention. Researchers say that a kid can only pay attention for as many minutes as they are years old. So for example, if you're teaching 10 year olds, after 10 minutes, they're gonna start losing some of that engagement. That's why brain breaks are so important. It allows students to step back from the material, process what they've learned, and then re-engage with the lesson. You know, when I was a teacher, our school had these really long hallways that made a square. So one of my favorite brain breaks was a quick walk around the square. It allowed students at a conversational level to get out some talkative energy. It got us out of the regular confines of the classroom. And you know, now that I think about it, EPI headquarters is kind of shaped like a square and <laughs> I've been in the studio for a while today. So why don't we go on a brain break? Wow, it's a lot brighter out here. You know, I love the studio, but it's good to get a change of scenery. Introducing yourself to new surroundings during the day can help elevate your mood and sharpen your focus mentally. Hey Kyle. Hey Samuel. Hey, what's the LYC topic this week? We're actually talking about brain breaks. Oh really, I actually have something for that. Do you mind if I do a segment? No, we'll put you up next. Great, I'll go get my things. It's easy to get bogged down doing the same thing in one sitting. Brain breaks are inherently engaging because they help break up the monotony of the day. Hey Kyle, going for a walk? Yeah, I'm taking some of your wellness advice and getting some exercise. Those really are my favorite parts of LYC. Wow, I'm really glad you like it. As teachers, we're so concerned about our students that we sometimes forget about ourselves. It's really important to keep in mind, especially on a busy work day. Mm -hmm. Hey Kyle, can you sign this? Get this? Yeah. A brain break is a great way to incorporate physical activity into your school day. Getting up and moving increases blood flow to the brain, which increases productivity. Just a short walk, like the one we're taking now, can significantly improve you and your students' performance. For me, I try to get up for at least a few minutes once an hour. Hey, thanks for filling in. No problem. So I really liked what you were saying about teachers needing brain breaks too. Would you mind doing a segment about that later? Sounds great. Hi, Mr. Pope. Well, hey, Miss Sparger. Hey, hey guys. guys. Actually, I need to ask Coach about something. Okay. Well, I'm really starting to feel better and more relaxed, and I'm really excited to hear what Samuel has to say in our next segment. <laughs> Here's the studio. Thank you for joining me on my brain break. The material you present to your students isn't automatically implanted into their brains. To turn this information into memory, the human brain must process it through the amygdala, a part of the brain associated with emotional response, decision-making, and memory creation, then on into the prefrontal cortex. The information travels along neural pathways on its journey, arriving at small gaps called synapses. Each synapse has a supply of brain chemicals called neurotransmitters that project the information across the gap and on its way. However, doing the same kind of mental activity for too long depletes the synapse's cache of neurotransmitters, preventing the information's progress toward the prefrontal cortex as the neural pathways begin to clog. Brain breaks are structured activities that use a different part of the brain than direct instruction. This takes the pressure off the overloaded synapse, allows it to refill its stock of your neurotransmitters, clears the neural pathways, and helps the information continue on its way. 
Well, it was really interesting to hear the science behind Brain Break. So thank you so much for sharing that with us, Samuel. And thank you for joining us here on Launcher Classroom. Thank you so much for having me today, Kyle. I'm really excited to be here. Yeah, that's awesome. So we're talking today about Brain Breaks. Uh, some brain breaks are more suited for elementary school students and some may be better suited for secondary students. Uh, do you know if there's any brain breaks that, that can work for a wide range of student ages? That's a great question. Um, I actually have one today that I want to share with you that I work with children of any age. Um, it's a really cool brain break called the rag doll. And it really helps you to reset and to focus on the task at hand and get, you know, as teachers we have a million things going on in our minds and our students do as well. So this will help you kind of come back down and focus on what you're doing. So um, let me do a little demonstration yeah, today. Um, so you can do this uh, either sitting or standing. Mm -hmm. So let's stay seated All for right. this activity. Mm -hmm. um, so you're going to start with keeping your feet flat on the ground. Right. You can rest your hands on your knees to start. And then close your eyes and uh, just begin to breathe in and out. So just do that a few times, really focusing um, and just relaxing. And then once you're ready, you can begin moving forward and folding in. Um, so you're going to come down and then you're going to let your arms hang by your side and just let your whole body relax. Um, so at this time, you're going to count to 60. Now count silently so you do not interrupt your student's focus. Um, but once you've counted to 60, you're going to ask your students to come back up very slowly so they will not get dizzy. Um, but yeah, it's a really great activity. And, and how are you feeling right now, Kyle? Very good. Uh, that was very relaxing. I felt the tension just kind of flowing out of me. You know, I right. wasn't using any muscles to hold myself up. So, yeah. Great. I mean, that's the whole point. You know, we want to um, relax. We want to reset so that your students are ready to go to the next activity. So it's really a great tool to use between activities, you know, to transition from one activity to the other, or even when your students first come into the classroom um, and kind of reset from what they have been doing previously. Um, so yeah, that's the, uh, that's the rag doll. And it's a really, really quick and useful thing that you can do. It takes less than two minutes to yeah, do. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a really great um, activity. Good. Thanks for sharing that mm -hmm. brain break with us. So we want to get a little bit more in depth about brain breaks for elementary school students. And to help us do that, we are going to go see Ryan in the classroom. Thanks, Kyle. Today I'm going to show you a brain break called word swimming. Word swimming is a little different kind of brain break because it does have instructional value. Let me show you what I mean. Word swimming is designed to use the shape of a word, combine it with movements that you will find anytime you go swimming, and help those students learn how to spell the words by tying them to the movements of their bodies. This is a very, very good way to teach and reach students who have different learning styles. So in the word greatly, we have letters like R, E, and A that sit right on that middle line. Then we have some letters that kind of jump up here, the T and the L come way up there, and we have the G and the Y that kind of dive way down. Now as the name word swimming implies, what we're doing here is swimming motions. And there's only three. Any middle letter just has that regular old swimming stroke. But when the letters jump up, the swimmers jump up. And when you have this dive down, your swimmers will dive down. You say, first we're going to do greatly. And remember to spell the word with me as you swim through the word. All right, you guys ready? And they'll say, yeah. <laughs> and you say, here we go. G R E A T L Y greatly. Over time, you're going to find they really start to enjoy it. And remember, you're getting your students to repeatedly spell vocabulary words and enjoy it. And that is really, really hard. So if you think this could help, try it out. Until next time. What a really clever way to blend in curriculum along with your brain breaks. Thank you for sharing that with us, Ryan, and thank you for being back on LYC. Thank you. I always had a lot of fun doing that, so I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, great. So, you know, I was thinking back to when I was a student. 
we never did brain breaks. Uh, so you can imagine my surprise when I became a teacher and all of a sudden this was something important to do in the classroom. Can you tell me what changed? Yeah, I, you know, simply put, our understanding of the learning brain changed. In the last 10 years, we have done so much research and gained so much information about how the brain works and how it needs to take some time to store information. Um, and it really makes a lot of sense. If, if you are up you know, in front of your class and you're giving them new information, new information, new information, and you never give them the break to store, uh, eventually they kind of start losing that information you gave them at first and then second, and it continues. Um, and so as we've learned about that, we've understood if we want students to keep the knowledge and build on it throughout the year, breaks are so important. All right, great. So, uh, you know, say we have some teachers at home that are watching this and maybe hearing about brain breaks for the first time. They like the idea and they say, you know, I, I want to start using these. I want to start tomorrow. What would be the next step? So the first step is to pick out the breaks that you like, uh, that work for your students and for your classroom space and those things. Once you've picked those out, uh, you take the length of your class and then you divide it into thirds. And at the end of each section, uh, you pick a break and you do it. And the final step is include the kids. Um, when you start the class, tell them you've got a lot of fun activities. Uh, they're going to get a break. Um, it's new. Kids will enjoy all of that. Um, so it's a great strategy. And if you wanted to start it tomorrow, you absolutely could. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. We've been taking a look at all the great ways that brain breaks can benefit you and your students. However, let's be honest, some students may see this as the opportunity to misbehave. Don't let that deter you from all the great benefits of brain breaks. All you need to do to be successful is put in a little preparation. So here are our top tips for managing brain breaks. Number three, expectations. Just like any other routine or activity in the classroom, students need to know what you expect from them. You cannot hold a student accountable to a standard that you haven't explicitly explained. Should they be seated or standing? Can they move? If so, how far should they be from another student to avoid touching them? Can they talk? If so, what type of volume level do you expect? Allow time for modeling and practice as these things will both help your expectations. Number two, variety. Brain breaks are fun. Doing the same brain break every single day is not fun. So make sure you have a variety of brain breaks and keep them on some type of rotation. Even consider allowing a random student or even the class to vote on what brain break they want to do that day. If a student enjoys a brain break, they're way more likely to participate. And number one, recovery. So managing a brain break might not be that difficult for you, but getting them back on task could be far more complex. So what you need to do is start preparing for recovery even before you begin the brain break. Something that I like doing was posing a question to my students, either about the material we had just covered or what material we were about to cover, then go into the brain break. And once they were finished, I would say, all right, remember the question that I asked you earlier? Go ahead and write down that answer or share it out to begin a discussion. And it worked great on getting those students back on task. So today we've talked about a brain break that works for a wide range of students. We've talked about a brain break that's very specific for your elementary school students. And now we're gonna talk about a brain break specifically for your secondary students. So why is it good for secondary? Two reasons. The first is it deals with hand-eye coordination, which many of the younger students may not be able to do. And secondly, it, it's not embarrassing. There's not a lot of movement. So if you have those secondary students who are very self-conscious, this is not gonna be something that they're hesitant to do or anything they need to worry about. Okay, so this is called mind juggling. And the only material that you're going to need is a sheet of paper. Okay, so your students will take the paper and they will crumble it up into a ball like this one. And then once they have the ball, 
ready, they'll sit back, get their shoulders back, hands about shoulder length apart, and start passing the ball back from one hand to the other. All right, during this time, they don't need to be talking to one another. They just need to be focusing on passing the ball back and forth. All right, when it looks like they're comfortable doing this, have them look away somewhere like the ceiling and start focusing on the ceiling. And then once they become comfortable with this, have them close their eyes and then focus just on the movement, just on the ball passing back from one hand to the other. All right, so what does this do, okay? It helps them reset just like the rag doll, but more importantly, it takes the focus from all these passing thoughts and it puts it into movement, ready to go on to the next activity. So there are two management concerns that you need to be aware of. First is material management, right? Uh, paper is a commodity in the classroom, so you don't wanna be a wasting a lot of it. So if your students have maybe a piece of paper that they already use that they don't need anymore, or if you have a recycling bin that's full and you can take paper out of there, that'd be a great idea. The second thing that you need to be aware of is your classroom management, right? Many students will see a wadded piece of paper as a ball to throw at maybe their neighbor or try to shoot it in the basket across your room. Uh, but what you need to tell them is be very specific in your expectations. Say, this is something that you need to keep in your space at your desk that just goes between your hands and that's it, all right? So we've talked about a lot of brain breaks for students today, but what about the teachers? So brain breaks are very useful for teachers too, and we're going to go to Amanda, who's going to tell us a little bit more about that. Imagine the last time you had a huge stack of papers to grade a lengthy staff meeting, or days worth of lesson planning to write. We all know that these are tasks that require immense concentration. But as teachers, our professional and personal lives can become so busy that mental fatigue sets in, and we become less productive despite how hard we're working. Like our students, we need to take brain breaks. It can be challenging to find time in our hectic schedules for a brain break, but you can and should do it. Remember our animation about the biology of brain breaks? Science tells us that all brains, even teacher brains, need periodic refocusing of their neural circuitry in order for information to pass efficiently through our amygdala and generate increased activity in our prefrontal cortex. This is where we sustain memory and solve problems. And when we focus for too long on one task, our pathways get blocked. So here are some brain breaks for teachers that can fit into the busiest of schedules. Take a quick walk around your school. Getting up and moving around will help reset your brain for the task at hand. Even better, have a stroll outside and get some fresh air. Change your environment. If you don't have time for a walk, you can still reset by going into a different room for a few moments to distance yourself from your task and help your brain to rest. Have a snack. This stimulates different senses and replenishes energy all at the same time. Take a few deep breaths. Close your eyes and focus on your breathing for a quick, stress-relieving mini meditation session. Finally, take a moment to daydream. Daydreaming can give the concentrated and logical part of your brain a rest by venturing into your creative side. Sometimes it can be hard to take a break when we most need it. If you're crunched for time, remember that switching gears replenishes mental energy. Making time to take a break can actually boost productivity and keep stress down too. Today, we've seen how doing the same thing for too long can result in a lack of retention of information. Brain breaks are a great way to clear up clogged mental pathways and get students back on track, ready for the next lesson. If you strategically use brain breaks periodically through your school day, you'll see a massive increase in your students' ability to pay attention and remain engaged. So as you plan out your next lesson, leave some room for a brain break be it the ragdoll, word swimming, or mind juggling. A little time out of your instruction now will save you a lot of time in the long run. And hey, don't forget to take some brain breaks for yourself. Thank you, and I hope you'll join us for the Q&A.